Hi guys, Danny here and welcome to my video on how to create a fully automated ore processing system. Now my subscribers will already have seen most of what I'm going to cover in this video in my Let's Play. But this video is aimed for people who are not subscribed to me and therefore haven't seen my Let's Play but still want to know about creating a low to mid tier um, fully automated mining system using just RotaryCraft. I'm going to be using items that are not from RotaryCraft just for uh, the end when you know the furnace but you can just replace that with the vanilla furnace and you can use the um, what is it called there is an item in RotaryCraft that allows you to really speed up the vanilla furnace the friction heater that's what it's called and if you use the friction heater the normal vanilla furnace uh, works at around 10 or 12 times its normal speed without using any uh, coal or wood or whatever you want to power it. So all you need to do is supply the friction heater with the power and just hook it up to a normal furnace and you can just do that instead. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to be using a boring machine because that's the most... Uh, it's the handiest and the easiest machine to use. The other machines that you can use to mine they all drop the items on the ground and then you'll have to go and physically pick the items up so the boring machine is really the best option and as you can see I have an industrial coil here my favorite machine in the whole uh, mod for those who've seen my videos and I'm just applying power to the boring machine specifically 64 radians per second and 512 newton meters of torque that equates to the maximum power and therefore it can mine through all of those uh, items of any hardness. If I right click on the machine you can see that there is an area. You can click on an area to make it bigger. Uh, just one of these squares and the next uh, the next time the mining pipes go further it'll increase the area. But I don't like you know the whole thing I just like keeping it this. If I hit reset position the mining pipes will stop where they are you know at the end and will restart again. So you can do that if you want to, but if I break this now, it won't have an effect on the rest of the pipes as it'll keep on going. Even if I break this, the next time it goes, it'll just start from where I broke it. But if I hit the reset position button, then everything will start at the start again. There you go. Now, another thing. You guys might have noticed that the boring machine, the machine itself, has an enchantment. Uh, the boring machine is one of the few machines, well, I say a few, there are around seven or eight machines that you can use to, uh, you can enchant it to make it more efficient. Let me just get the book, I should have it with me, but I left it upstairs, and here we go. If I go here, you can see that it says that you can enchant some machines the same way that you enchant tools with the same effects as if you were enchanting the tool and these machines can be enchanted you can see there boring machine woodcutter and mob harvester those are the ones that people should have an interest in and you can put silk touch fortune efficiency and that sort of things on it if you use silk touch you know you get the ore instead of getting the items if you get fortune if you when you break items you might get more of it like lapis or diamonds and efficiency as you can see i have efficiency because um, when I didn't have the efficiency to, the operation time was twice that, as in it was around 30 seconds. But with efficiency 2, it cut it down to just 14.15 seconds. Now, I could do Silk Touch. That is quite a rare enchant, but I could do it. And it would just get me the blocks, but I feel the efficiency is the best because it really cuts down on the time taken, and that's perfect for me. Now, you can put the ender chest on any side you want, you don't have to specify a side. And to enchant the machine, all you need to do is take a, take a book, an enchanted book, uh, like that, and just right click on the machine with the book. And it'll just apply the efficiency or any, item, any um, enchant you want on the machine itself. Now, second thing, I've said this many times in many of my videos, is to go into the tunnel that the machine creates after it's finished because when you break it all down sometimes the machine well all the time rather the machine can't get all of the blocks 
So there's obviously going to be blocks like just there. Perfect. Diamond ore just there. So when I break this break this block, I should be able to get the diamond ore. But if you look closely over there, you can see that the mining pipes are holding uh holding the water from falling down here. So if the mining pipes weren't there, the water would be falling down on top of me. The same applies for lava. And if it was um, items that would break down, for example, sand or gravel, the boring machine's mining pipes would turn the loose material into the harder form. For example, if it was gravel, it would be turned into stone, just the one on the edge of the mining pipes. And if it was, I think I might have hit a mining tunnel that I mined already. Anyways, or if it was sand, it would turn into uh, sandstone, things like that. Now, like I said, when you're done with the mining, uh, you'll know because the machine starts sparking. Uh, before, the machine uh, had a limit of how far it could go before it couldn't chunk load anymore. As in, the, um, the blocks on the far side wouldn't be generated and all you'd get is smooth uh, cobblestone. But Rick has fixed that, so now you do get the ores, even if you're very far. And like I was saying, after the machine's done, you should really go in and mine up everything the machine couldn't get, like this. And that's really important. If you wanted, you could break the pipes like I did before, or try to see if you can do it without breaking the pipes, because as soon as the pipes are broken, mobs will start spawning, and everything is going to turn downhill quickly. Okay, trying to find a way to get out of this pipe. There we go. So like I said, the best enchant to get, in my opinion, is efficiency, because it cuts down on the time, and it goes inside of the ender chest, just like that. And now, let me go to the machines that actually process the items down here okay this is just my little uh, automatic uh, pulverizing I guess you can call it pulverizing it basically processes the ores or the items that I get from the boring machine and I get the ingots now what happens here is the water falls from there I was just using some glass. I could use um, sticky pistons, whatever, but I just decided to use some glass. The water falls there into the hydrokinetic engine. I have a system of shafts, and uh, if I just break that, I also have some CVT units, basically converting the power into the amount of power that, uh, or rather, into the right amount of uh, speed and torque that this requires as you can see the torque is 128 you can have the speed whatever you want but the grinder goes faster the more speed you apply that's why i i have two hydrokinetic engines and let me just fill this up and the grinder you can use to do a couple of things basically number one you use it to make lubricants and the lubricants thankfully are all stored in an alternate uh, internal tank inside of the grinder so all I'm doing is occasionally throwing in some canola like that into the chest here and the canola is just taken up by the grinder and stored inside of the grinder itself oops I'm accidentally taking the canola and the grinder is super handy because the grinder grinds up every ore into three flakes and each one of those flakes is smelted into an ingot. Uh, there are some other items that give you multiple items per uh, flakes for example the shards from Thomcraft. Let's see if I have some. Uh, it's not going as fast so I don't really have some at the moment but let's see. Canola being processed there. Okay let me just throw the ores I have here. As you can see, items that can't be processed won't be used up. If I hit R there, okay, and R there, you can see that every one of these flakes gives you four of the uh, shards. 
about the entropy infused item and then you just put the entropy infused item into a crafting uh, square and you get yourself a shard okay if I just throw in the emerald ore like just like that uh, it would go into one of these grinders which grinder okay I'm assuming it's in one of these pipes aluminum emerald there you go and when this aluminum is done it, the emerald is gonna come in now you could use um, pickaxe with fortune or something and you'll get quite a few emeralds but if you do it this way you'll get three and three is a pretty good number so I'm just going with the grinder I do have a pick with fortune but I decided to go with this method because it's much simpler and let me just throw in some gold iron topaz basically you can grind up any ore you want with this method so like I was saying the hydrokinetic engines there produce power as you can see I have uh, pipes there uh, the pipes are connected to the bottom of the grinder which take the lubricant to the hydrokinetic engine as needed uh, the CVT there also requires uh, lubricant but it isn't used up and the items are taken to the chest here by some pipes I have underground some transfer pipes from extra utilities basically you can use any pipes you want and as the items are taken into the grinder here let me just take away the canola there it isn't really needed at the moment put it up there and they should grind another one there okay and so the items are taken to this chest and using these pipes they go to the two grinders there and then I have some item ducts connecting the two directly to this pipe and the pipe leads to this chest now you could use pipes going inside of the infernal furnace like I said I'm using the infernal furnace but you can use vanilla furnace or furnace from any other mods and that's basically it the items go from that chest uh, into whatever furnace you want and then I can't really show you guys right now but you'll have to trust me about this you get three of the items or ingots from the ores so let's see as you can see three blue, blue topaz gems and that was from one ore I put that in a crafting grid and I get myself some blue topaz from Ars Magica throw this back inside I also have some earth infused items it just says road to craft there put that in a crafting grid you also get yourself an earth shard and yeah that's pretty much it you can use the extractor but the extractor takes around 4 million uh, watts of power to run and the grinder only takes quite a small amount actually there you go it only takes around 4000 admittedly the, uh, the extractor gives an average of around 5 ingots per ore and this will only give 3 however this takes like I said a lot less energy and is not quite as fiddly you know it doesn't have the four steps you don't need to supply it with uh, water or anything like that just supply it with power give it the items and it will grind it up for you just like that quite simple and quite compact as well so yeah uh, that is my ore processing system like I said if you've been watching my let's play series you'd have seen this already but I just decided to make uh, an extra video for those people who don't want to see my let's play but still want to look at how I made the automatic uh, ore processing system it's quite handy and I can just let this be by itself occasionally I need to top this up with some uh, canola but the hydrokinetic engine doesn't use much lubricant at all a very very small amount it takes around one millibucket every couple of seconds and because I have two grinders here with around 4,000 uh, millibuckets of lubricant each you can actually see how slowly it's being drained I can stay back and just let this do its thing for hours alternatively I could have another grinder there uh, supplying myself or rather the hydrokinetic engines with a constant supply of the lubricant but that alternative is best used when you have more hydrokinetic engines and you want to create a backup system if your you know your first two or how many grinders you have fails so yeah that's it for this video if you like the video please leave a like or subscribe for more minecraft videos uh, thanks for watching guys